So um, thank you for the opportunity to do this. Um, I really uh, am honored to be able to uh, speak for five minutes um, in honor of who I, someone who I believe is really one of the heroes of geography. Um, I'd like to, uh, we, we've heard a lot of, uh, lot of evidence today of, of Stan's contribution um, to his students, to publications, to software. Um, all of this is stunning for its complexity, for its abundance, and for its originality. Um, coming from the other side of the Atlantic, uh, I can say that all of this, um, all of Stan's reputation that we've heard about today here is also true among American geographers, um, where he is very uh, deeply respected for his contributions to the MAUP, um, to GAM, um, to region building, to geodemographics, and to many, many other things. So I thought what I'd try to do in five minutes is to answer the question, what does this mean for the future? And what does it mean for young scientists as we move forward and uh, reflect on, on Stan's contribution? And let me, let me um, start this by saying that uh, much of what we do in quantitative geography has been the attempt to apply standard statistical ideas to the geographic case. These are ideas, of course, which came out of work with experimental plots at agricultural research stations, um, with samples of participants in psychological experiments, essentially controlled experiments. And yet what we work with, of course, in the geographic world are natural experiments, experiments under which we have no control. And unfortunately, this world of geography requires radically different assumptions. This is not the world of experimental agriculture or experimental psychology, and yet the methods we use are those methods. I have a dream that one day the default case, the normal case, in at least all of the sciences that deal with phenomena embedded in space will be the spatial case. It will be the assumption that spatial dependence is always there, that spatial heterogeneity is always there. And that's a very, very different world from the one that we grew up with. Um, so that's an area, I think, that Stan has made enormous contributions to. It's one example of how he has changed the questions, as uh, Chris Brunson said earlier. So if I could try to summarize this um, in something parallel to Newton's laws of motion. Right? Newton got three laws of motion. Uh, there are three laws of thermodynamics. Right? So what are Openshaw's three principles of geography? And these are things that perhaps we can carry forward and apply in our own work in the coming years. So number one, experiment. We've heard a lot of reference to experiment over the last uh, hour and a half. Uh, play and have fun. Um, there's no clear distinction, I think, between having fun in the open shore world and doing serious work. Uh, both merge into one whole. Um, secondly, be useful. Study real problems. Make sure that what you're doing is, is well motivated. All of Stan's work, I think, um, admirably exemplifies that principle. And then third and perhaps most important, challenge assumptions, blow up the boxes, and in a, a, a very characteristic uh, Openshawism, all previous work is wrong. That's a principle that I held very dear when I started out. I felt very guilty about it, but I can see that uh, other people, including Stan, have, have held to that principle extremely uh, well throughout their career, and it's something, I think, which we can take away from today. Thank you.